The world and all its treasures shall belong to me, Spydra, once I eliminate Gadget Boy! <laughs> Gadget Boy! He's so much smarter than the rest. Gadget Boy! Cause his gadgets work the best. Eavesdropping camera is in place, and this bird is ready for paradise. A whole week in Hawaii! You call this surveillance, you bubbling brainless buzzard? Does this mean the trip is off? Oh. Yeah! I'll take that as a yes. I've dispatched Mulch and Humus to fix your miserable malfunctioning movie camera! Isn't that the security system? Yeah, if anyone comes too close, it turns them to toast. No matter! When my polar controller is planted at the North Pole, it will control all satellites! Like weather satellites? Yeah! Whoa. No! Communication satellites! With this, I can eavesdrop on all the world's conversations! What happens when the good guys go to the North Pole and destroy it? That's the beauty of my plan! Uh. We'll install the device before any explorers, namely... Perry and Cook ever get to the North Pole. Then we'll destroy the explorers so the pole is never discovered. I thought we were going to Hawaii. Oh, whoa! Ah, whoa! I'll take that as a no. Devil, what are you doing? All of the phones are out. I've got to get in touch with my psychic advisor. None of the phones are working. All the communications are down. Oh, I thought I'd been put on Zen waiting. We have to go to the emergency backup phone system. Go, go, Gadget Boy Breakfast! Hello, are you calling about breakfast? I'm calling because all communication satellites are out. Come to headquarters right away. Right, Chief. <laughs> and you'd better get this phone checked. It sounds like two cans on a string. If they're psychic, they don't need the phones. Gadget Boy's going back to the North Pole in 1909, and he needs your double mansions. I can't work until I hear from my psychic advisor. I'm having a psychic premonition, Dabble, of you unemployed. All right already. There's a time discontinuity in 1909 at the North Pole. Whoa, that's when Perry and Cook were racing to be the first to reach the pole. That could be it, but we'd better wait for my psychic to advise me. We have to act quickly, Iron. Be careful, Dabble! <laughs> Here are my double pensions. But I don't know if they'll be very useful. I'm not a mind reader, you know. This is a snow converter to bargain. It is an engine that runs on snow. With my luck, there won't be any snow at the North Pole in 1909. We'll chance it. This looks like fun. 
It is my ice cutter hula hoop for cutting holes in ice walls. This is fun. <laughs> Probably since a whole expedition. <laughs> You're pretty good, Chief. Maybe you should come along. Those down the parkers would set off on my allergies against you, the boy. Whoa! Double! Just a sec, Chief. This looks like an ordinary ice cube. Maybe that's all it is. Who knows? <laughs> Youch! That's a cool! <laughs> What's your ice cube supposed to do, Myron? Morph into an ice boat hydrofoil <laughs> vehicle. Oh. <laughs> looks like it works. We better be going. Modern time, G9! <laughs> At least your fax tie didn't... explode. <laughs> Maybe the North Pole would be safe. <laughs> It's the humidity. Piece of cake in 50 below temperatures. And that's without windshield. Besides, blue is not my color. Stop complaining, you blithering blue beak bird brain! You don't hear mulch complaining! But I'm curious. Stop complaining! How come you're at the North Pole and you're not cold? We're at the North Pole? Uh-oh. be lost. These are some kind of ice pirates. This is the Roosevelt, Commander Perry's 184-foot ice boat that he used for part of his trip north. We have to be sure you make it to the pole. We're here to help, Commander Perry. Good. Here's a pickaxe. Dig in. Oh. Hmm? Ahead of me lies my dream, my destiny. Everything in my life has led to this. Everything in my life has led to making the world's biggest snow cone. <laughs> Guess that's what they mean by snow blind. Get it, G9? <laughs> A little snow humor there. <sighs> to be slow going from here on. That's because of all this frozen water, but at least there aren't any waves. We'll need to split up so we can protect both Perry's expedition and Dr. Frederick Cook's party. It's pretty cold, huh, G9? A party? Cool. Well, cold, actually. Heads up! Oof. Spider wants to keep them from reaching the pole. She doesn't want them foiling her latest evil invention. You help Cook while I help Perry. We'll keep the bad guys on ice. But where are all the penguins? Penguins only live at the South Pole, Gadget Boy. Guess they only come to the North Pole on vacations. Knowledge is power. <laughs> Controller running now! I need total control of all communication! I'd like to see her out here in the snow. Uh, that's a hard one. How come you're inside where it's warm and I'm outside freezing my tail feathers? Because I'm the evil genius and you're just the silly sidekick! Curses! The metal midget and hapless agent Heather are here to mangle my plans! Well, how about the heating pad? Or even the hot dog? Maybe. How about a frozen dinner? When I feed you to a polar bear! 
A parka would have hidden my waistline better. Yeah! Go destroy that frozen frigid small fry gadget boy before he profes my brilliant plan! Here's something hot for you, Boris! Hot chili peppers! <laughs> yeah! This looks like fun, G9. Now, let's go find Cook. Sousers, <laughs> Bowsers, this is better than sleigh riding. <laughs> Lean to the left, G9! <laughs> Your other left! Uh... Go, go, Gadget Boys, no shovel. Looks like we're snowbound. Or at least, ice cream. We'll never find Cook this one. <laughs> Hello, fellow Nordic explorers. Where are you headed? If you're Dr. Frederick Cook, we're here to help you find the pole. If not, we'll just hitch a ride. I am Frederick A. Cook, Arctic explorer. Are you on a daring quest to reach the North Pole, or just searching for vacationing penguins? Because if you're looking for penguins, you should turn back right now. <laughs> By the way, you don't seem as well equipped as Commander Perry. Are you sure you can make it? I hope so. I have hit upon the new route to the North Pole, over the Polar Sea, and will stay to try it. <laughs> Being friendly is a good thing, G9, but don't overdo it. We've got a job to do. The Eskimo people have abundantly proved themselves to be my friends. In that case, I'll help them too. How are you enjoying the trip so far, friendly Eskimo guide? There is nothing here, just ice. We'll club a cook before he gets to the pole. He's lifted by honest rat, too. <laughs> Gadget boy will be an ice cube. So long, Arctic Explorer. They'll be frozen solid. Not and out. <laughs> what is it, G9? You should have remembered to use that tree 300 miles ago. Uh oh. Here it again. You're slowing up Dr. Cook's expedition, G9. I've heard of snow bunnies, but this is ridiculous. Hmm. We need to veer two degrees west by northwest if we're going to make it. I guess I should have learned how to use one of these infernal gadgets. Uh, how will you determine that you've reached the exact North Pole and made history? I'll look for the frosty barber pole. <laughs> I saw a little Arctic here. Working without a sextant or a telescope will make it more difficult to reach the pole. Difficult? Ha! Ah, fitting human persistence against the blind brute force of the elements. That's easy for you to say. Eavesdrop on the world if you can't finish my top secret snooping device! I can't crack the icicle, but then this whole plan is cracked. Never mind! I'll deal with the polar controller. You can stop Perry and hapless Heather from reaching the pole. <laughs> Bill, and I'll have you fricasseed! At least fricasseeing would defrost my tail feathers. We'll get them now. Cook will never reach the pole. Bowsers! Bowsers! Would you look at the size of that sled pole? Better put this mud on ice with the others. He's a big puppy. Come on, old boy. Cook will thank me for catching this stray sled dog. I don't suppose you have another dozen metal dogs with you? Sorry about that, sir. He's one of a kind. This trip is really going to the dogs. All of my dreams ruined. We've got to keep going. 
I understand you've tried many times to reach the North Pole. Yes, but somehow, I never make it. I can't imagine why. And you won't make it this time. I'll show you that revenge is a dish best served icy cold. Great. I was getting a little overheated. <laughs> Generally, I dump. I have a better idea. Quick, trim sails. We're moving out. But we're not really ready to go yet, my dear. If we don't, we're going to be shipwrecked here for a long time, like forever. My snow converter toboggan is harnessing the avalanche's energy. You know, we are making unexpectedly good time. Come on, G9, mush. Pretend you're delivering a letter to Santa. <laughs> Are you sure the little fellow is up to it? My dog can handle anything. He'll be pulling our 700-pound sled through howling gales in minus 50-degree temperatures. And... Oh, An ice bank will never make it. No problem. Gadget Boy is always on duty. <laughs> Where were you when I was in Antarctica? I'll reverse polarity on my polar controller, making their compasses useless. They'll be lost forever. They'll never find the pole, and my device will be safe for all eternity. I wish she'd thought of this before I froze my beak. <laughs> now I control all communications and all compasses. <laughs> now, if only she'd control the thermostat. I'm getting strange readings on my computer. Hold a strange person. By the way, what's a nine-letter word for top of the Earth? North Pole. I think Spider changed the polarity of the pole so we'd be lost in the Arctic. Perhaps we should turn back? Though from here, all directions are south. We can't turn back. I'll navigate by the Aurora Borealis and North Star. How about a four-letter word for solid white water? What about snow? Oh, no! A blizzard! No, no. Blizzard has too many letters. <laughs> Hurry, G9. Dr. Crook's got to reach the pole. This is no time to catch snowflakes on your tongue, G9. <laughs> I have to continue north, but I can't tell which way. My compass has gone crazy. At least we managed to round up a few of the lost dogs. They are noble, dignified beasts. At least some of them. Here, sir. You can use my compass. It only points north. Of course, it's frozen solid. I can do it from here. Thanks for all your help. And best of luck with your incredible sled dog. <laughs> It's going to be a winter's tale for the delinquent dunce when this snow detonator goes off. And I'll bury the polar controller under a glacier so no one can ever disturb it. <laughs> I'm a genius! It sounds like a perfect plan, your evilness. Set for a big snow boom any minute. Uh, Boris, the engine is too cold to start. Huh? Stop the timer on the snow detonator! It's frozen. My copy book is frozen. I can't be any more help to you, Commander Perry. Nothing can stop me. I'm in my element now. I wonder experts doubt that either Perry or Cook ever made it to the pole. Reception is really bad this far north. Bowsers, Bowsers. There really is a barber pole up here. <laughs> Show some respect, G9. After all, this is the North Pole. We must be pretty far north, but still no sign of penguins. I told you, penguins are at the South Pole, Gadget Boy. That polar bear sounds just like Agent Heather. Would you believe that polar bear is Agent Heather? Gadget Boy, you found the North Pole! 
You hit something, Daddy Boy! It's going to blow! Run! We not only found the North Pole, we spread it all over the place. We helped two true explorers who epitomized the best of the indomitable human spirit. Though perhaps not the best navigation skills. After all, knowledge is power. The polar controller is destroyed. Let's go home. Your psychic predictions would have been right. My dab inventions were a success. <laughs> Good, no. Good news, Chief. History is intact once again. I don't know how you did it. You say Gadget Boy will bring gift? I brought you a gift. No Gadget Boy. I'm allergic. <laughs> and the gift will have dire consequences. <laughs> My psychic is so smart. I am so smart. Sounds like you're getting a cold, Chief. I'll get you yet, Gadget Boy! I guess I knew it would be a cold day when I got a trip to Hawaii. Yeah.